five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with another exciting episode of the Shaggy Life Podcast. If you guys are listening to the podcast on your favorite podcasting app, don't forget, you can go over to youtube.com slash at Curtis Tucker, see me waving at you. If you guys are watching this and you're seeing me wave at you, don't forget, if you guys want to listen while you're driving or out on the trail. You can listen on your favorite podcasting app. So I appreciate you guys checking in. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and also to the YouTube channel. And that helps me quite a bit. Uh, Helps me in the rankings and the ratings and all that stuff. So I appreciate you guys checking in and I'm continuing trying to get more episodes in every week. So this should be a fun one. Uh, You guys probably know by the title of the podcast that today's episode is all about Survivor. So uh, I have been watching Survivor since uh, the beginning, 2000. And for one reason or another, uh, never really, you know, was in a position to try out or even thought that I could try out for the show. And then now all of a sudden, uh, I'm kind of obsessed with uh, trying to get on the show. Uh, and not the show, the competition. I, I want to get on there and test myself and um, see how well I can do. So these are the 22 signs everything pointing in the right direction that I should be on Survivor. So think of this episode kind of like the movie Signs, and that's why I called it Signs. So in the movie Signs, there's a bunch of different complex events that go on that all lead up to the ending of the movie where they all help each event helps another event to uh, come to a conclusion in the movie. I guess it's they conspire to do something uh, in the universe. And so this is kind of like the synchronicities and the winks of the universe that I talk about every now and then that I am really like to look for. Uh, it doesn't seem like I've been looking for them a whole lot here lately. And uh, I know that if you don't look for them, you definitely don't see them. And so I need to get back on track and start looking at those. But um, so there's different signs. And if we choose to see the signs around us, uh, we can use our ho- thoughts and feelings towards them and the eff- and affect the outcome of something in our life. And so I kind of I'm thinking, why am I running seven miles every morning at 61 years old? Why am I staying in such good shape? Why am I, you know, doing this? Why am I uh, going on adventures? Why am I podcasting and blogging? You know, there's all these different events and things that I'm doing. And sometimes I wonder why, why am I doing those? And I think uh, I'm starting to realize that maybe I'm doing those because it's the synchronicity and the winks of the universe that are going to bring everything together and everything that I'm doing and being in such good shape uh, at 61 and a half, almost 62 years old, maybe so I could be the winner of Survivor. And so I'm going to go through 22 signs that have kind of all led up to now might be the perfect time for me to be on Survivor and to compete against uh, my fellow uh, competitors. So let's get into that. Um, Number one, uh, I, I talked to a life coach uh, a couple of years ago, and we were talking about what motivates me and and how my job was and life and everything and and this uh, life coach kind of kind of narrowed everything down and had me you know describe certain things and then narrow it down and narrow it down narrow it down and then we got down and uh, she finally said okay we're we're trying to find your two life well I think we were looking for my life word or your power word or something like that something that kind of defines you know what you are what you want to be and we came up with two life words uh, for me that kind of center around everything that I like to do. And one of those words is adventure, and the other word is community. And so if you look at what I do, uh, I build communities. I've built the Enid Buzz community for Enid Buzz, and then I've built uh, the 70s Buzz community for people that enjoy the 70s, uh, kind of uh, building a community here of uh, people that like to follow me on 
uh, you know, what I do here uh, and my adventures and things like that. And then the word adventure is, you know, I like to wake up and go out on the trail every morning, do seven miles. I want to photograph the sunrises. But, you know, every morning, every sunrise is a new adventure. Everything that I do every day is a new adventure. And then there's the big adventures when I, you know, leave Enid and I go somewhere or fly with the Thunderbirds or, you know, do things like that. So, uh, so it's pretty cool that my two words are adventure and community because that's what Survivor is. It's, it's, you know, the biggest adventure out there, but it's built around a community of people that don't know each other. They've got to rely on each other until they have to turn on each other. And that's what the whole game of Survivor is, community and adventure. And so uh, it, it just goes without saying, it, Survivor is my uh, biggest adventure and uh, the way that I can build a community. So that's number one. Number two, um, you know, well before I was researching a lot of stuff on auditioning for Survivor, and then real quick, I, I meant to say this at the beginning, I will have my first official audition tape attached to the end of this video, and you guys will also be able to hear it. So the last three minutes of this episode are going to have my um, this year's uh, Survivor audition on it. So uh, so anyway, but really quick. So before I decided to audition, there is a movie. So I've been, so for, you know, several years now, I've been thinking of the word adventure and, you know, I chase the solar eclipses to the path of totality and, and do different adventures. And I just, I just like to look at life and everything that I do as an adventure. And then that gives me something to blog about, to podcast about. And so there's a movie called Doolittle, and in this movie, there's a, a boy that wants to go on this adventure, and uh, Dr. Doolittle uh, says, no, you know, you can't go, you're too young, blah, blah, blah. So the boy goes home, and he's in his room sulking, and the animals decide that they want him to go. And so they go to his house, and they, they stick their heads in his window, and this uh, macaw named Polynesia, she pops, it's a she, and she pops into his room, and she's telling him, you know, we think you need to go, blah, 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 and she says, now, are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? And I'm like, oh, wow, that's like the coolest line in a movie ever. So I actually have been watching that movie and rewound it just to listen to that line because it makes the hair on my arms and gives me uh, hair on my arms stand up and gives me goosebumps because I just love that line. Are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? Now, when I was researching Survivor, guess what? When you, when you read some of the material and some of the things, they describe being and playing Survivor as the adventure of a lifetime. So those two sync up for my number two. Number three... Uh, like I said earlier, I have I'm, I have watched Survivor since 2000, since the very first season. I have never missed an episode. So you could say I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan. I am not a super fan, although I know, you know, the how to play the game, the strategies, the what everything means, the idols, searching for idols. I'm not a super fan in the sense that I've memorized everybody's name and every season and who won and who was on the, you know, has been on multiple times. I don't, I don't memorize it like that. And so, so in that sense, I'm not a super fan, but again, you know, there's one show in the whole world that pretty much upsets me if I don't uh, get to watch, and that is Survivor. And then I'm, I'm also kind of, I kind of get this blue feeling, get the blues when the end of the season is over because I'm like, wow, I've got, you know, however many months I've got to wait till the next season of Survivor. So I am a huge fan, a big fan, um, you know, all the way uh, back to the beginning. So um, that gives me a lot of knowledge, a lot of, uh, I've seen the changes. Uh, over the years, over the seasons, and all that. So, uh, big fan. Number four, uh, Survivor was kind of a show that uh, gave me a connection with my mom. So, as my mom got older, there was there was really 
two things. She was a huge TV watcher. And there was two things that really kept us connected. And they were both TV shows. And one of them was MASH. Uh, we used to watch MASH back in the 70s, 80s. And then it went into reruns. And we would always talk about MASH. And she would always write the actors that were on MASH and get pictures and autographs. And she had this huge MASH collection, which, of course, when she passed away, she left it to me. And so, but the other show that we had in common was Survivor. And so my mom was always the one that would call me and say, hey, did you remember Survivor Starts This Week? And and then we would, you know, talk about different episodes. And she was always, not every year, but almost every year, she would buy me a buff for Christmas. And so that would be one of my Christmas presents. So uh, my mom passed away at 81 at the age, uh, at the age of 81 in 2020. And so this is kind of a, you know, I wish things had been uh, better, you know, where I could have uh, applied for the show earlier so she could have watched me on the show. But, uh, you know, towards the end of her life, there was no way I could leave her. And then I had kids. I was a stay-at-home dad. And so lots of, I think I'll get to it here, uh, lots of reasons I couldn't um, audition for Survivor earlier. But so this is kind of, this would be a great way to, um, as a memory to my mom, is to get on Survivor and and to play. So number five, um, uh, maintaining my fitness. You know, I have, uh, for years and years, I've uh, kept in shape. I work out. I started doing aerobics. And then maybe almost 10 years ago, uh, one day I decided to go try the outdoor trail and have never come back in, come back in since. I, it's hard for me to uh, work out on a treadmill or some type of indoor stationary uh, device because and I just I literally can't so even if it's uh, 105 degrees outside or if it's um, you know 10 below I will usually get out and get on the trail and uh, go do my seven miles every morning so that's kept me in shape I also do a quick little workout um, every day uh, lately I've been thinking about longevity and so I'm doing a lot more kind of yoga uh, deep knee things to keep all of my, you know, to keep everything where I'm flexible and bendable. I do not want to be uh, ever at an age where I fall down and I can't get up on my own. So, so that's a lot of it uh, that's driving. But I think, as in good a shape as I am, I, I know without a doubt, at 62 years old, I could compete physically and in the challenges with any 30 year old. I mean, easily, easily. Uh, so, um, so I think that is why. Um, I am uh, in such good shape. Number six, um, I've ne I had never applied to Survivor uh, again because I, I quit my job in uh, 2003 so I could stay home and watch my girls. And so I had the privilege and was blessed to be able to stay at home, created my own job working here on a computer, uh, digital uh, content creator, uh, doing stuff like that. But I got to take my girls to school every day. I got to pick them up every day. I got to take them to dance every day. Uh, two days a week, I would take them to lunch. And so all through their growing up, there was just no way I could have ever left and auditioned uh, for Survivor uh, because my wife worked full time. And then they got into college and they were both on palm teams and so I had to, I, and sororities and so there were almost every weekend was going to some event for my daughters and so it was pretty much impossible for me to leave because of my daughters and then about the time they were getting older you know in college uh, my mom was getting older and needing me and my sister to drop by and uh, you know, make sure she was taking the right pills and doing things like that. So just it just it just never was the right time for me. And it, so it never really occurred to me that, hey, I need to apply. And if I make it, um, you know, figure out how to do it. But uh, so that was that, that was really. The, so now uh, my mom has passed away. My oldest daughter has graduated. She's now working. And then my youngest daughter will have a year of college left, but she's taking a gap year. So this is the perfect time. N nothing binding me. Uh, I'm able to leave. I'm able to go and my my job will run by itself. And so um, so if I did make the show, I would be able to go. So this is the perfect time to go. So um, that's why I'm really psyched about trying to get on uh, one of the next seasons. 
uh, in uh, 2003, again, this is number seven, 2003, I did become an entrepreneur. And uh, what's really cool is that allows me to work for myself. I don't really have a set thing that I have to do for somebody every week or every day. I just basically provide digital content to my different communities and they you know, they read it and, and all that. So, you know, I could, um, I'm able to leave, I guess, basically what it amounts to is because of the job that I have, I am able to take off for, um, I think it's required like 40, 40 some odd days if you're going to be on the show to, um, to get everything done. And so anyway, um, I am able to do that. So I was not able to do that again, another one of those signs. Why, why was I working for myself all these years? Da, 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 da. Number eight, um, challenges. You know, I love to challenge myself. Um, you know, flying with the Thunderbirds was going to be a challenge because everybody was telling me, yeah, you're going to throw up, you're going to pass out. So I took that, I took it as a challenge that I was going to fly with the Thunderbirds and not pass out and not throw up, which I accomplished. Uh, I did 9.3 Gs, did not pass out. Um, Back in May, uh, I decided to join a challenge. It was a step challenge, and basically, you just kept track of your steps every day for 31 days, and whoever got the most steps won some free shoes, and then you were all, so everybody was competing individually, but then you were also in a group, and so everybody's steps were added together for the group, and then the group that won also got some prizes, and so, uh, so I basically uh, knew that I was getting about 16,000 steps in at that point every day. So I thought, well, I'll go for 20,000 a day. I can do that. So um, got 20,000 in on the first day, and then somebody else in the competition got in 34,000. So I thought, oh, wow, this is actually going to be a competition. So the next day, uh, my second day, I got in 30,000. Well, the person that had gotten in 34,000 like dropped really low. So then all of a sudden I realized that, oh, well, they just had this one day spurt. And so I basically was able to keep ahead of everybody. Uh, so by the end of the first 15 days, I was fairly far in the lead. But when I looked at the amount of steps I had, I was at 500,000 steps on the 15th. Well, then I thought, okay, I'm probably going to win this thing. So that's not a challenge. Let me challenge myself and see if I can do a million steps in 31 days. And so I made my own challenge inside the challenge. And I didn't make a million steps in the 31 days, but I pushed it and I made a million steps in 29 days. So, uh, so that was a challenge. So, and again, like going out on the trail, if it's 105 degrees, I still go out. If it's, uh, you know, five, 10 below, I'll still go out because of the challenge. I like to put my body and my mind in, you know, in, in challenging weather and see, you know, just to keep myself fresh and keep, see if I can do it, see if I can, I can make it. So I love the challenges. I think being on Survivor uh, shouldn't be any problem handling the challenges. Uh, so um, hopefully, uh, that all comes together. Number nine, um, I'm always trying to motivate people. You know, when I take my uh, pictures and now I'm doing videos and I post them of the sunrise, I usually try to come up with some thought for everybody to motivate them or inspire them or encourage them to um, get out and do more stuff. And and so now, like I say, I'm about to turn 62. And so I'm seeing a lot of my classmates and friends and family around that age that have either passed away or a lot of them are on medications, or some of them can barely get up out of a chair. Um, a lot of them are, you know, maybe overweight. Some of them uh, just aren't in very good shape. And so I have tried to keep myself in shape. Now, it does take time and it does take effort, but I, I'm trying, I try to encourage other people, especially people my age, to go ahead and keep moving. You don't have to do, nobody has to do what I'm doing because, you know, that would be crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe do a quarter of what I'm doing. Just get out there and walk uh, every day. You know, maybe you're only going to walk 5,000 steps a day. But anyway, so I like to encourage, I like to motivate, and I think being on Survivor 
having people see me on Survivor, have them know how old I am. Now, part of my strategy would probably be going in, not telling everybody that I'm 62 years old. I think I would go ahead and tell everybody that I was 52 years old. And uh, just, you know, I'm going to get pegged as the old guy anyway. But I think uh, chopping 10 years off might not make them feel like, um, you know, they might think of me as dad rather than granddad. So, uh, so anyway, uh, but I think being on the show, doing the physical challenges, um, being able to compete just as long as I could get on the show and compete, uh, would be able to motivate a lot of people that they could do things, you know, even into their sixties. Uh, number 10, uh, I grew up with a huge, fear of speaking and getting in front of people. And uh, all throughout my early working career, I uh, never wanted to get in front of people, didn't want to get in front of the camera, uh, didn't want to give speeches and all that. But then somewhere in college, and, and so I just wasn't super outgoing in high school, junior high, high school. Uh, but once I got into college, I kind of started finding myself and and I started putting myself out there and then I was doing had to do some competitions in some of my classes where I competed against other groups and um, the first time that we did it uh, my group came in last and and so I thought you know what this next competition in the second half of the year we're gonna win so I got motivated I motivated everybody in the group um, I went in with the mindset. That's when I started learning about mindset. So I went in with the mindset that we were going to win, that I was going to wow the people that were judging. And I went in there and I wowed them and we did end up winning. And so um, then as I started doing my own businesses, I knew that uh, I was getting people asking me to talk in front of civic groups and things. And um, to help me get over the fear of public speaking, uh, I went to my uh, preacher at my church and said, hey, can I do the liturgy? And uh, so that forced me to get up in front of the church every Sunday and pray and talk to people, you know, every Sunday. And then uh, I continued to do uh, speaking engagements. And then I was asked to talk to uh, young entrepreneurs. And so it's all it's all kind of, you know, evolved. And then now I do things like this. I do video podcast and I can get on a radio show and not be a bit nervous. I can get in front of a camera and not be a bit nervous. I've been in uh, several movies where I've been an extra and being on camera, I, I don't get nervous. And so I think that has helped me where I could be on Survivor. I can get on there. I can describe what's going on on the show uh, when we do our little diary things. And I actually wanted to be outdoors and sit on some rocks and behind some bushes to film this episode, but uh, it was really, really windy in Oklahoma today, and I didn't want to have bad sound. So I didn't do that, but um, but I think I could talk. I think I could do a really good job of describing what's going on on Survivor. And I know that telling stories and describing what's going on on the show is very important, and that's sometimes how people are picked or not picked. So I think I've got a great background on um, talking to uh, to people and being in front of the camera and stuff. Number 11, uh, I live in Oklahoma. So what does living in Oklahoma help me on Survivor? Well, like I've said before, uh, in Oklahoma, we've had um, temperature uh, changes by, I think, up to 60, maybe higher degrees. So it might be, you know, 100 degrees in the afternoon and, and a cold front comes through and it's, you know, 30 degrees or 20 degrees you know, by the end of the day. And so, and like I say, when I get out on the trail, sometimes there's afternoons where I want to go get a little bit of sun and it's, you know, 102 degrees with 108, um, um, uh, what do they call that? The uh, heat index, but I still go, I get out there. I just, I want to, I want to see, can I get out there in that heat? And then in the cold, you know, I just, I put layers on. I don't wear huge coats. I've got all these different layers. And so I go out on the trail in the freezing in the morning and, and that's just, that's just testing myself. It's getting out there and living in Oklahoma, you get those extremes. You, you get the wind, you get the, uh, you know, we can have a tornado or a thunderstorm pop up out of nowhere and get wet. You know, I could be out. I've been out on the trail. I uh, thought, thought it was going to be a completely sunny, nice day, and I've gotten caught under a thunderstorm and come home completely wet. So being on Survivor, being on the island, if there's a, a storm or if there's, you know, weather one way or another, I'm going to be able to handle it because of uh, I come from Oklahoma. I'm used to it. I'm used to all those uh, different extremes. So, so where I come from, uh, being in Oklahoma, I think is going to help. Number two, 12, 
um, food. So uh, again, I'm about 62 years old. I weigh probably usually try to keep my weight around 160 pounds. I'm 5'11". And so I've tried to control my eating. I don't want to say my diet, but what I try to do is eat 2,400 calories a day. And so that's 1,200 calories at lunch, 1,200 calories at dinner. And then normally I skip breakfast. So, and then I eat dinner around six. So I'm done by seven. So I go from seven o'clock at night all the way to 11 o'clock the next day without eating anything. Unless I get in, sometimes I'll go through periods where I do some snacking or sometimes I'll eat two granola bars for breakfast in the morning. But normally it's just two meals. So I think I, I mentally and my body will be able to handle some of the not having food every day. Now I know you can't really prepare for uh, feeling like you're starving and, and there is, that is one of the big challenges on survivors not having food. But I think I've, I'm enough prepared. It's not like I eat huge meals and I eat all the time. So, um, so I am going to be, you know, a player that's not going to have to worry about uh, food all of the time. Number 13, I love to tell a good story. Um, you know, right now I'm, I'm podcasting. Uh, we've done, I think I've done over 600 podcast episodes between all of the podcasts that I've done. I was on radio talking about what was happening around the world for three years. I did that for three years. So I've been able to tell stories and keep people engaged. And, and um, you know, sometimes when I talk or I'm on a panel or a board, you know, I, I can usually keep it pretty concise and um, and then like uh, in advertising, if somebody wants me to run an ad for them and they send me a whole bunch of copy, you know, I can usually, you know, crop it down really quick and just, you know, I just use the main points. And then I've done it so long, I kind of know what the audience wants to know. What what questions are they going to ask? You know, the advertiser didn't put an address in, so I know they're going to ask for the address, but they put four quotes in. Well, the people don't care about the quotes. They, they want to know who, what, when, and where, you know, so, uh, so I can tell a concise story. I like telling stories. Um, I can be as animated as I need to be. Usually when I give speeches to young entrepreneurs, that's when I'm the most animated. Uh, normally when I blog, uh, not blog, but podcast, I'm, I'm a little more normal, uh, even keel, uh, because, you know, there's just not a whole lot to get excited about. And I think it's, you know, maybe sounds a little better if I just keep everything even on my podcast. So you can't judge my, my energy level and my storytelling by, um, you know, all of my podcasts. So number 14, uh, talking about energy. I do have good energy. I try to um, stay energetic. I try to have good energy, good vibes all the time and um, try not to talk too fast. Now, you know, there are things that I am passionate about, you know, being an entrepreneur, digital marketing, digital content, blogging, um, going on adventures, uh, podcasting. I mean, when I get to talking to somebody, like if, you know, people will ask me, hey, can we go get tea and and talk about what you do. And, and then when I start talking about what I do and the passion that I have for what I'm doing, man, sometimes I get going too fast, but man, I can tell a good story and, and I can just keep it going. And I, I feel like I can keep, keep people interested, but, um, but I do have good energy. I do have high energy. Um, I'm always thinking on the positive side of things, which I think gives me that good energy, that positive energy. Uh, number 15, um, so I think they probably ask, you know, why do you think you can win Survivor? And, you know, I'm sure some people say, well, because I'm a good evil person or I'm a, you know, this or that or, or whatever. But I, you know, I wouldn't have one strategy going into Survivor. My strategy would be to not have a set strategy, but to go in and adapt and pivot to whatever is happening. Who who are the people I'm playing with? Who am I playing against? Uh, what is the weather doing? What is the food situation? What are the challenges? What are the new twists on finding uh, idols? You know, you have to adjust and pivot. And so that has been me. Um, and um, let me see. I want to make sure I'm not going to miss. So so pivoting. So. 
you know, I've had businesses uh, as an entrepreneur that have collapsed and gone away completely, literally overnight. And I've had to pivot and think of rather than going to get a new job and, and working for somebody again, I I had to pivot and come up with ways, new ways of making money, new ways of looking at the internet and digital um, content and things like that. And so I've been able to adapt and um, dealing with clients when I was a cartoonist, uh, dealing with clients and the things that they wanted, uh, you know, I had to be able to read into their description of, of what they wanted. So I'm able to adapt and to pivot, which I think you need to you definitely have to do that on Survivor. You can't go in and and be this one thing and um, not be able to change. Uh, and so, so my strategy, you know, I, you know, the strategy that I do have is you, when you go in, um, you you're, don't be annoying. Don't annoy anybody. Don't do something that's obnoxious or annoying people and don't make anybody feel threatened. If you don't threaten anybody, you're going to be able to probably make it to the merge. Uh, the third part of the strategy is at all costs, win the competitions, help win the challenges. And so, you know, that's kind of my strategy going in, but it's really pivot and adapt to whatever the situation is. Uh, number 16, um, I don't mind taking chances. Like I say, I, I quit my job. I had a, a great job working for my father-in-law in 2003, but uh, at that point we had two daughters and I was taking them to work with me and uh, I was rocking them with my feet while I was typing on the computer doing all these ads and stuff. And, and uh, I decided to uh, take a chance and quit my job and work from home and it luckily it all worked out and then like I say you know after 10 years that business collapsed and and instead of going to get a, a new job where I was working for somebody I took a chance started a, a different business on my own it's worked out I've been doing that for 10 years uh, some of the things that I've done in between you know doing a podcast I took a chance well the the uh, 70s Buzz podcast is doing really well. We've got a great uh, listenership. And so, um, you know, putting my name into interview people has gotten me, I've taken a chance and I've been able to interview Garth Brooks and Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley and, um, you know, doing things like that. So I don't mind taking a chance and doing things. And so being on Survivor, you know, I'm going to be, I think people are going to look at me as, you know, being the, the old guy that's just there to kind of coast, but I'm going to be taking chances. I'm going to be looking for idols and I'm going to be looking for advantages and, and just on the move, on the go, always thinking, always thinking the next step ahead. So I am one to take uh, chances. Number 17, um, I love to test myself. Um, and so... Uh, oh, so basically, um, like I say, going out into the heat or the extreme cold or doing the million steps or, you know, pushing myself on other things. I think that will help me when you get on Survivor and they do the endurance challenges. You know, a lot of what I do comes down to mindset. Do you, you know, um, are you able to concentrate? Are you able to think about what you're doing and get past the pain, even though, you know, I may be in pain, my feet, my ankles, my legs, my arms, you know, if, if you have enough mind control and your mindset is no matter what, I'm going to win this, you can outlast the other people because they can't last forever. You know, um, you know, it kind of depends on who, who you're competing against. But I think um, I've got that ability to challenge myself that I would do really well in the endurance challenges. Number 18, uh, many of my friends and family for years have told me that I need to be on Survivor. And I think that's because I've kept in such good shape. I like to go on adventures. I like to put myself in different challenges. And so if you've got friends and family telling you you should be on Survivor, I believe that means they would love to watch you on Survivor, which means the rest of the world would probably have a good time watching me on Survivor. So uh, number 19, uh, sleep. You know, I don't know the exact uh, sleeping situation on every season of Survivor, but um, I am a person that doesn't require eight, 10 hours of sleep. Uh, my average uh, amount of sleep is, I, I've, I've been forcing myself to get six and a half hours of sleep because I'm worried that, you know, that one of the main things that, you know, I'm not doing 
uh, for my longevity is I'm not sleeping eight hours a day. Well, it's it's almost impossible for me to sleep eight hours a day. It's trying to squeeze seven hours in, it's still pretty tough. So I, I've been forcing myself. Before that, though, I've gone years, decades, only getting five and a half to six hours of sleep. And so, um, you know, I'm able to function. I, I'm, I'm not depressed. I have no ailments. I'm on no medications. You know, there's all these things they tell you. Uh, if you don't get enough sleep, you're going to have this, 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 and that. Well, for decades, I haven't gotten enough sleep, and I've been fine. I mean, I've, I've, I'm still cruising along. So, um, so depending on you know the sleeping situation, I know it's not going to be comfortable and all that. But I'm not somebody that's going to not be able to function if I don't get enough sleep. Plus, I'm not going to be somebody on the show that's always going to be spending the entire day taking naps. You know, I'm going to be out there exploring and uh, doing things. So as far as the camera crew, uh, they're going to have to keep up with me. And I'm not going to be one of the guys just laying around trying to get a bunch of sleep. Number 20, um, I have the social skills of a 62-year-old, not a 22-year-old. So I've just got a whole lot more social skills. I've been around a lot more people. I've dealt with a lot more people. I've been on many boards. I've been, uh, I've had to negotiate things uh, being a member of a board. I've had to deal with clients from all over the world because um, I do a lot of stuff online and, and on phone calls and in meetings. Uh, you know, I'm always having to be social, creating uh, Enid Buzz, um, you know, I, I kind of have to ride the fence. I can't let anybody think I'm this way or that way, or I lose half my audience. And so it's a it's a balancing act. I'm walking, walking a tightrope, um, you know, knowing what to say, what to do, how to walk down the middle without pissing either side off. I think that gives me a huge advantage uh, in my social game that uh, other people, especially the young people, have no clue. You know, I've, I've watched the episodes and there's guys that are cocky and, and that are annoying and they have they have no clue that they're about to get, get kicked off because of what they're doing. And another thing is I'm super self-aware. Uh, so, you know, I think I would be able to know if I'm feeling uh, threatening to somebody or if I'm annoying somebody. So um, hopefully we'll see what happens. Number 21, um, this one, you know, why... You know, I want to be on the show because it's an adventure. I want to be on the show because it's a challenge. Uh, but I also would love to win Survivor. And why? Because um, quitting my job and working for myself has been a blessing, has been the best thing in my whole life, but it didn't come with any benefits. And so I don't have retirement. I don't have huge investments. I don't have a whole lot of money to stop working on. So um, I see myself working well into my 70s, if not into my 80s. And that's why I continue to do these um, online digital businesses, because I, I will be able to do these until my 70s and 80s. But if I were to get on Survivor and I were able to win or, you know, even get second place or something, uh, I could use that as investment or as part of my retirement. So the plan is to get on a Survivor, win, have a retirement plan so me and my wife uh, can have a great life uh, and get old together. And number 22, um, I love manifesting and asking the universe to give me what it wants me to have. And so I've asked for a ton of stuff over the years, especially as I've gotten more heavily into uh, manifesting uh, and uh, it's so crazy how much stuff happens when you manifest. And so I have manifested that I am going to be on Survivor. I've manifested that I'm going to the, be the winner of uh, my season of uh, Survivor. So um, I have the universe conspiring to get me on the show and to win the show. And if that's not something, um, I don't know what is. And so... Um, uh, and then again, you know, uh, on a whim this uh, this year, I thought, you know, it's time. Let me throw in a audition tape and see what happens. And so um, I did throw. So so here at the end, I will be playing my audition tape that I did send to Survivor. Now, what you've got to realize is this audition tape 
was made only watching their suggested audition tape. Since then, I've been doing a lot more research and have gotten a lot more ideas and now I kind of know more of the stories and the uh, the things that I know Survivor wants to hear from me, which I didn't really realize when I was making that uh, video. So, you know, they want to know more and, and probably in more detail, why do I think I can win? What's my strategy going to be? And, and I've described some of that here in this podcast episode, but there are some things that I know if they ask me, you know, describe what you did as a board member that you were able to negotiate uh, between two sides and you were able to have a, a good social game or, you know, I can go, now I know th that I need to go more in depth and show who I am, my authentic self. Um, you know, I'm not going to go in, you know, the only thing I can go in is uh, being the old guy and I don't want to go in being the old guy, but it's going to be, you know, fairly obvious that, you know, I'm over 50 to most people, but I don't want to go in uh, saying I'm going to be the villain or I'm going to be the floater or I'm going to be the, you know, the whatever, you know, put me in a box. I, I just, I want to go in and I want to be um, the strategic player, the guy that's uh, keeping an eye on everything, the, um, the guy that's willing to take chances, the guy that can pivot that can adapt to all the, the different situations and that is aware, is self-aware and knows kind of what's going on around him. And so, um, so I'm looking forward to all that. Uh, hopefully uh, they uh, see my uh, tape and give me a call. And uh, the more that I've researched this, like I say, man, it's a, it's a long process. That's the one thing that I don't understand is it is a long process to get on Survivor. There's interviews and you, they fly you out to California and put you through tests and you got to take off work and you, you go out a week ahead to adjust to everything out there and, and you do all this stuff. And then you've got several players that have quit. You know, they, they say, I want to go. And I'm like, how could you ever want to quit Survivor? How could you ever go through that process and get on the show out of all the things tens of thousands of people that apply only a certain amount even make it through the to get to the the process and then once you go through the process of getting on the show they don't everybody that goes through the process doesn't make the show like maybe i don't know 30 people get to go out to california and go through the process and then maybe they only pick 18 out of those to be actually on the show. So, man, it's like luck and it's strategy and it's personality and it's so many factors to get on to play Survivor and then to get on there and say you want to quit just drives me crazy. And so that's another reason I want to be on the show, to show that a 62-year-old, a you can get out there and you can have the mindset that you're going to be able to survive and you're going to be able to win the show and you're going to be able to win the challenges and outwit, outlast everybody on the show. So um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Those are my 22, 22 signs that I should be on Survivor. Uh, and here's my Survivor audition tape. Survivor, welcome to Shaggy Duck Studio right here in Enid, Oklahoma. I am in the northwest part of the state where there's waving wheat and tornadoes and thunderstorms. I am Curtis Tucker. I am 61 and a half years old today, and I should be 62 by the time we film my season or Survivor. And so I am the old guy for the season, but uh, even though I am 61, uh, a lot of people mistake me for 51, which is probably what I'm going to tell everybody on the show, but I act like I'm 31. I am a child of the 70s, love to collect all the 70s stuff. I've got it in here. Uh, I am a digital media guy. I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. I blog, I podcast, I go on adventures. Um, I do a website uh, uh, providing news from my hometown and all that. I've been married for just over 25 years to the same gal. And uh, we've got two daughters. My oldest daughter just graduated from the University of Oklahoma. She was captain of the Palm Team. My younger daughter, who's just 17 months uh, below her, just uh, left Arkansas. She was on the Palm Team at Arkansas. She's going to sit out for a gap year, then she's going to go to OU. So I've got a whole year right here where I can do a lot of stuff, where I don't have to go to football games. I don't have to chase my daughters around. So it's a perfect timing to be on Survivor 
and uh, I would love to be on there. I like to do all kinds of challenges. I get up every morning uh, at six o'clock and I go out on the trail. I do seven miles every morning, uh, not just for the exercise, but for the sunrises. I take pictures. You, know, you can go to my website, curtistucker.com, see all of my uh, photos of uh, the sunrises every morning. I meditate. I manifest. I have manifested that I will be on Survivor, so uh, it's a given that I will be on the show. Uh, I love to just meditate out there, be outdoors. I love the sunshine. I love the beach. I love challenges. Uh, last month uh, in May, I did my first challenge, uh, a step challenge, so they were putting it together in my hometown, so I decided to enter. I think I was either the oldest or one of the oldest people in the challenge. By halfway through the month, I was so far ahead of everybody with the number of steps I had that I had to make my own challenge, and so I decided to go for a million steps uh, by May 31st. I did not make a million steps by May 31st, but I did make a million steps by May 29th, and so I like to do fun things like that. I would love to be on Survivor. Why can I win Survivor? Because I'm not a nitwit. That's why I can win Survivor. Uh, you know, I know some of the secrets. I've seen every episode. So you get on the show, you keep your head down, your mouth closed the first week. You don't rock in any of the waves. So you don't get not kicked off the first week. Uh, then... Uh, you find an idol, you go to tribal council, what are you going to do? You play the idol! Uh, then uh, you learn, you know, I'm an observer, I love to observe people, so I'm going to know who to team up with. You team up with, you don't want to team up with a power couple and be the third guy, or you're going to be that third guy sitting there that nobody asks any questions from. So uh, I think I can go in there and help win the competitions in the first part of the show where we don't have to go to tribal council. Then as we get on into the show, uh, I think I can uh, work my way in. I've got a good vibe, good energy, get along with a lot of people. So I am the perfect old guy for your show. Give me a holler. Ringy D, we'd love to talk to you. See ya. Uh, my ideal uh, situation would be uh, to be on season 49, which I think they are casting right now. It is October 2024. I believe they have already, um, they're either taping or have already taped season 48. And then rumor is that season 50 uh, will be, you know, a big reunion type show. So uh, for me, the possibility is to try to get on season 49. If not, uh, then have to wait till season 51. And from all, again, all the research that I'm finding out as I get deeper into this is, you know, some people send in a tape and they get a phone call that day. Some people don't get a phone call for two years. Some people go through the process and don't get on, but they get on years later. Some people have sent tapes in every year for 10, 20 years, um, uh, and then they finally make it. Some people uh, send tapes in and never hear anything, they have never get any response. And so, um, so anyway, it is a privilege to uh, be able to play Survivor, and uh, I would like to have that privilege. So uh, listen to my audition tape. You guys, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. You can email me at shags at shaggyduck.com or um, curtis at curtistucker.com are my email addresses. But uh, take a listen. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the podcast and what uh, show ideas you would like me to have. And of course, if I did make the show, I uh, would have lots to talk about on future episodes. Um, you know, I'm not sure what they allow you to say after you're on the show, um, so I'd have to find out all that, but I would have some pretty exciting um, behind the scenes um, episodes, of course, just telling you what I would be allowed to say. So, um, in, you know, everybody out there, uh, send me your good energy, your good vibes. Um, let me know that you want me to be on the show. And uh, if you guys know anybody or you uh, know anybody that you can tag, let them know, tell them I'm out here. And I'm just going to keep applying. Now I'm, now I'm kind of almost getting obsessed with trying to get on. So um, I probably will apply every year for several years now. And uh, I'm just going to keep staying fit, keep, uh, keep looking at the strategies and, and maybe even start doing some more of the endurance things to get ready for uh, the season that I am on the show. So anyway, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Shaggy Life Podcast. Uh, uh, be sure and subscribe on your favorite podcasting app or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, I'm going to get out of here. See ya!